you guys have a short little session here. Uh, we're here to uh, remember the contributions of the John C. Lilly to uh, uh, the float community, which really wouldn't exist if it wasn't for him, at least not in the form it is today. Who knows if someone else would have discovered a uh, float tank in the basement of the National Institute of Health and realized that this was the way for him to really investigate um, his obsession with learning about the relationship between the, between the body and the mind and uh, using it to experiment on himself. So back in the 1950s, uh, John C. Lilly first started to uh, experiment with flotation. And um, it's pretty exciting to um, uh, go back and look at that today. So he's still a bit of a controversial uh, figure. And um, I think there's a book, uh, Stage Right, that I left there. Let me go and uh, gr grab it really quick in a minute. But uh, uh, Lily is uh, known for having really popularized the idea of flotation. And uh, uh, that's been going on for several years. Thank you. And lately, uh, they, we've been republishing a lot of his writings. So he's best known for the Center of the Cyclone, uh, the scientist, a novel autobiography. There's also a book which I think is, uh, I'm not sure if it's in print, but probably should be back in print uh, again, called The Deep Self, Profound Relaxation and the Tank Isolation Technique. There's been a lot in the media lately about, about John Lilly, uh, some of it pretty uh, sensationalistic. Um, so uh, I think that uh, going back and reading some of his books will give us a better idea of what he was uh, really coming from and, uh, and the seriousness of his approach and uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, incredible uh, creativity that he brought to uh, investigating uh, consciousness that uh, really uh, inspired a, a lot of this stuff. So this book is just, just about to be re-released by um, Consciousness Control Publishing. And I read this a few years ago and just blew my mind uh, so much that I, uh, I wrote a play about it. So I've been doing a one-man show based upon the scientist, but also incorporating a bunch of his other work as well. Center of the Cyclone, uh, programming and metaprogramming, the uh, human biocomputer, and other books like that. And I think Coincidence uh, Control Publishing is right on that side of the outer concourse. So if you have a chance, go over there and uh, look over some of their new, really, really beautiful editions of uh, John Lilly work. So we're gonna do uh, a section from our show uh, that's actually being performed tonight and tomorrow night at the Denver Press Club. Um, but the section we're going to do right now with uh, Freddie Katz, my musical director, is uh, what we call John Lilly's first float. Take yourself back in time, about 60 years, in the basement of the facilities at the National Institute of uh, Mental Health. John Lilly is about to embark upon a new chapter in human consciousness. And of course, it's, we're talking sensory deprivation, so uh, why do we need music for that? Good question. I guess what you would call what you're going to hear tonight is, uh, this afternoon, is the sound of silence. I enter the tank. Salt water solutions so I can lay in the water comfortably with my face above water. 
earplugs in, light shuts off, scent and taste negligible. The sensation of my body at first feels like things are pressing against me, but I soon realize that it's internal tension, nothing more. I try to relax. For a half hour, the usual concerns and worries of self-talk cycle through my head. I catch myself thinking, calm down and let go. And in time, the sensations start to fade. At this point, I should be unconscious. According to the reactive brain hypothesis, my head should be shutting down, starved for external stimulation. But it's the opposite. I am active and alert in the darkness. Euphoria. The experiment had worked. Data generation. Results I could point to. Career success. But as the self-congratulation fades, I am left with, well, this experience. The exterior world starts to fade. Along with it, its hopes and fears. It's not there. I've been putting it there. Let go and go into the silence, the darkness. It's restful, relaxing. Enjoy the experience, accepting it. The stillness is broken by reflexes and habitual movements, stimulus hunger. A finger strokes another. Involuntary splashes causing the water to move and shift. Tiny sensations become huge. The desire to leave the tank presents itself, and sometimes I do. But then, other times, resisting the impulse for my body to reassert itself, I press through. Things quiet down once again, and then the thoughts come back, stronger than before. No longer simply everyday thoughts. This is intense psychodrama. Reveries and fantasies on a very personal and emotional level, the ones I thought I could share with you, but I can't. They're too personal, too revealing, too dark. Finally, having fought through the mundane plan making, the bodily tension, the psychodramas, I am back in the void, but at a higher level. I have achieved escape velocity. Not an escape outward, but inward. I have found a place inside myself, one which I can carry along, and where I lay breadcrumbs of consciousness that I need to take me back, I can return to this zero point, ultimate void, and ult ultimate peace. I have found the center of the cyclone. So uh, if you found that at all you know, interesting and you want to hear more, uh, uh, the show goes into all aspects of uh, John Lindley's story, his journey, I guess you would say, uh, from uh, being an um, uh, establishment uh, uh, researcher to, uh, to something quite different. Um, thanks again for having us. Thanks, Graham, for inviting me. And uh, I can't wait to hear the rest of the speakers. Have a great conference. Thank you. Thank you.